If you're not completely happy with your chicken coop, or you're just not sure what kind of coop design is best for you, if this is maybe your first coop, then stick around and let me walk you through why I chose the designs I chose over others and how I can help you find the best design that's gonna be the most appropriate for your situation. Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. I'm all about making things easier for myself when it comes to, well, pretty much everything when I design things around here. And the chicken coop is definitely one of those things. I have to deal with enough stuff on a regular basis that I try to make things as easy as I possibly can. And I always try to take into account physical limitations, if I'm sick, if somebody else has to come in and take care of things for me if I'm out of town, as well as making less work for myself on a daily basis. This usually means I've got more work to put in on the front end, but believe me, this has its advantages. And I realize not everyone has the time or space or the money to do everything up front. I don't either. It's why I extensively research everything before I create my first designs. But you don't have to do it all at once. And I'm always tweaking and making things better as I go, but so far, this coop and run is the best I've done yet. I will list everything I did in the description of this video. So if you're interested in buying, I'll have those for you. Now let me show you what I did. Now it's kind of messy in here because we're still making shelving and all kinds of other things. So don't judge me yet. First, let me tell you about the old coop that I had. It was a chicken tractor because like a lot of you, I wanted my chickens to be able to have access to fresh grass on a regular basis. And chicken tractors are great, but not for the number of chickens I have. And we'll probably have, you know, chicken math, right? The coop design was solid. It was so solid that it was heavy, so much so that I couldn't just move it around with a hand truck. We actually had to use a tractor to move it around. And that became such a pain in the butt that we didn't do it as often as I needed or wanted. And it just became a hassle. Second, the minute we started moving the tractor around, things started to shift. And I don't mean inside things started to move around. I mean, the structure itself started to shift so that latches that were in one place one day, we moved it the next, they'd be slightly off the other day. So I was having to remove and reinstall hardware just to keep doors closed. It also meant that there were a lot of air gaps that were created and not so much a problem in the summertime because it allowed even more ventilation, but in the winter, it became so drafty, it was hard to keep any heat in. It was also the standard raised coop where there's an area underneath which is great because chickens have a place to go underneath for shade, but not so easy if you are older or have any physical issues. If you're trying to get underneath the coop to chase a chicken, I also had my water and food containers attached to the underneath of the coop. So that's where the chickens would eat and drink. And every time I had to change the water or add more food, I was having to crawl around on my knees to get to it. Also, if I had to catch a chicken, they would run underneath that portion really really frustrating and painful. Now it's different if you're younger or you have kids that you can send underneath to catch those chickens, but I really didn't want to have to keep doing that. Additionally, getting inside the coop to clean it because it's so small and not a lot of headroom was a total backbreaker. So after a ton of research, I decided on the design that I'm gonna show you today. I do wanna say that I stole this design from Carolina Coops. If you've not heard of them, please check out their website. They make amazing looking coops. They are very expensive, so I couldn't afford to buy one, but I did use a lot of their ideas in designing this system. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you do have the money to buy one of their coop systems, I would totally recommend it and you should check it out. The first thing I decided was to make the coop stationary. I still really wanted a coop that I could move around, but I didn't want to keep having problems with misalignment and things shifting. So I let go of having a movable structure in exchange for having a larger run. We have a workshop right next to the house and I decided to go ahead and make a space 
for the hen house on the inside, much to the chagrin of my husband and father. And I don't have to deal with crappy weather outside if I'm dealing with the chickens. And it also made me stress less about the chickens being in either really hot weather or really cold weather. It's still raised, but what we did was made storage space under the raised part of the coop. We keep all of our food and whatnot underneath here. And we have, my husband made these rolling storage containers for, we've got our grit, bedding, etc. underneath. I have two of them and I can put all kinds of containers underneath. The only thing I needed was a small set of stairs. Now these are just pet stairs for a car, so it can hold me. It does not do well for my husband, so you may need a ladder or you may want to build steps up to it. But the beauty is when I'm in here, the chickens are at my chest level, so I can easily take care of them from this perspective and I can see them and, and, and do all the things I need to do without having to bend down or climb up into it. I can easily step up into it when I have to clean things and I have enough headroom to stand up so it's a lot easier on my back and neck when I'm working in here. Right, Smina? I can access their nesting boxes from inside so if it's raining I'm not getting the eggs soaked and I'm not getting soaked while I'm collecting eggs. Now the doors that I designed are again something I learned from Carolina Coop. Mostly I keep it open like this but I can close them off if I need to. If we're doing anything in here that I don't want like sawdust or anything getting into the coop I can keep these closed but I usually keep them open. I can also drop this piece down so when I'm ready to change out the bedding, all I have to do is drop the door down and scrape all of it outside. The other thing that I absolutely love about Carolina Coops is they use for their base and sides, they use HDPE or high density polyethylene plastic and that is a food grade plastic. Unfortunately, those boards are really expensive. So Instead of going with HDPE plastic, I decided to go with a liquid pond liner. I painted all of the walls and the floor. Now, it's a lot less expensive. It's thick, you need a lot of it, and it dries so fast that you have to plan out each step carefully. But it has made washing it down super easy. The other thing I decided to do was put a drain and a pipe in the bottom of the floor so that when I do a bed change, I can easily put a bucket underneath here and scrub and hose down the walls and then drain the water into that bucket. And it makes it so easy and convenient to wash down the inside of the coop, especially if there's sickness going around or if there's mites, or as you can see, hi Norma, there's a lot of poop on the walls because they're chickens. The only thing I didn't do that I wanted was slope the floor so that it would all flow to the drain, but it really isn't a deal breaker. You can also see that on the inside, I installed a vent so that it is drawing air up and out of here. Now let's go outside and see what we've got going on out here. If you find this video helpful and you like my channel, please consider liking this video, subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It really does help me to keep going and presenting videos to you that will help you do those things you never thought you could. The next thing that I absolutely love is this automatic chicken door. I actually bought this for use with or the first coop we had, and it, it really is super convenient. It runs on batteries, so you don't need electric. I do change them out twice a year. It's pre-programmed, hi, to open 20 minutes after sunrise and it closes automatically 20 minutes after sunset. You can program it for different times, but this works out perfectly for me. If I'm out at night, I don't have to worry about getting home in time to close up their door. You're a good model, aren't you? The run is attached to the side of the shed, so they have easy access. The ground is so uneven. It's also very rocky out here. We had to build it up a little bit. So we had a choice. We could either build it up with concrete walls or we have a ton of this retaining wall block. My husband had the great idea to use this. So this is all built up around here. We also had a lot of these wall panels. These are all separate panels. We had these built, most of them for the run in the last coop. And we just had to build a few more 
to go the whole way around and I ended up using quarter inch hardware cloth, which is way overkill. You don't need to use quarter inch, but it is what I had on hand. You could easily go with half inch. Really nothing gets through this, even bugs. And sometimes I wish the bugs would go through so that the chickens would have more to eat while they're inside. We built a roof over the door area so the chickens have shade and an area to get out of the rain or snow. And that's where I feed them. So it also keeps me out of the weather. There's three access points. There's the door from the shed. We have a door over there that I can get to without having to go through the shed to get into the chicken run. And then we have a bigger opening in the back. We built this mostly for getting the wood chips in. It actually has been really great for getting larger items in and out of the coop. It's also, as you can see, they're all lined up. It's where we let them out to go free range. The next thing I built is this retractable awning. It's not automatic. We have to manually do it. And of course I have aviary netting over top, which has helped. We've had a few hawks here and there dive bomb and nobody's gotten in yet. If it's really, really hot outside, this allows me to give the chickens a little more shade. Okay, let's be honest, the sunshade is really more for me. Then we have this jungle gym that my friend Brad built. And of course my husband loves to collect sticks around the yard and he's put them up as extra bars where they can hang out and jump up on and have a good time. My dad also was kind enough to chop up some tree trunks. The cool thing about these is they attract a lot of bugs. So we occasionally flip them over every so often and then chickens go crazy for the bugs that are hiding out underneath and inside the wood. We also have a chicken salad bar that we recently built this year. And I have a video on that if you're interested in seeing how I did that. Lastly, I've got food and water. The food buckets I made are food grade plastic containers that's mouse proof and it's also rainproof, so your feed isn't gonna get wet and moldy. And it's also a boredom buster for the chickens, right Bryson? They have to peck on these dowels to get the food. It drops and they get to scratch and peck like they like to do anyway. I made grit and oyster shell containers that I, out of PVC piping and lids. They're drain holes in the bottom and I just fill them up when it gets low and put the cap back on so there's no water getting inside. And then of course I have my water set up. I have a video on that I did last year around this time that kind of gives you a good idea how to have a nice neat water bar. And the way that I have it set up, I only have to clean the water. They have fresh water. It lasts about one and a half to two months before I have to do any real cleaning on it. I mean, I do check it every day. I just have to fill up the water and that's a 15 gallon tank. So that lasts, you know, at least several days before I have to start filling it up again. And I plan on doing an updated video on how I built this system. The great thing about this water setup is for those of you who use water troughs or water buckets, you do have to clean them out every few days. And like I said, I don't have to go through that mess of doing it every few days. I only have to worry about it once a month or two. Now, of course, this does require electricity, not a lot of electricity, but if you don't have electricity near where your coop is, uh, you could definitely do something like the door and maybe some lights that run off of solar. You could also buy some solar panels and hook up batteries, but all of this doesn't really require a lot of electricity, so it's definitely doable if you wanted to add some solar panels. The donkeys want out because they haven't been let out today because, well, we just cut hay and we're ready to bail, so they're not happy. There's really only a few things that I purchased specifically for making this coop. Everything else was made out of scrap wood that we had around here or already existing items, either from the previous coop or just stuff that we had hanging around because I've got my hands in a whole bunch of different things. So I've always got a lot of extras around. One of the things I probably will do in the future is add a rainwater collection system so I don't have to continually fill up from the water hose, but that's gonna be a little while before I get to do one of those because I just finished one for the donkey and cow barn and I'm not ready to do that again anytime soon. Plus we don't have gutters on this, so we need to install gutters first. And that's it. That's the Tater Town Coop and Run. If you have any questions about the reason why I did what I did, 
or how to do anything in particular, or if you have any ideas that you might see as an improvement on what I did, please let me know because I'm always looking for better ways to do things. And you know, sometimes I don't hit every point. So if you've got something, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And thank you for taking the time to visit us here on Tater Town. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.